If I give you 30 leads a week or 40 leads a week, you do good with the leads that are coming in for maybe week one, week two. The leads that came in three or four weeks ago, you're not doing anything with them. So what ends up happening, it just compounds and compounds and it just creates less follow-up. It's Greg Harrelson here with the Level Up Podcast. And um, as usual, of course, I brought a guest with me to uh, to talk a little bit about leads, um, lead conversion, ISAs. We're going to unpack quite a bit of conversation around leads, online leads, and what we can do to monetize those leads. I know that there's a lot of people that are buying leads, but there's uh, a lot of people also having a hard time turning those leads into a, a positive ROI. So I'm going to get right down to it and introduce a guest, uh, also a friend of mine. His name is Preston Guyton, and he's got two things going on that we're going to kind of touch on today. He's He's got this one company uh, that he's partnered with John Cheplick on, on it's called Digital Maverick. And that company, to me, got my attention because it's basically an ISA company where you can kind of hire them and they do it for you. But I want to really kind of pick his brain today as to what's working, what's not working. What has he learned by taking over people's databases and helping them, um, you know, create returns? And then, of course, uh, he's got another company called Easy Home Search, which is like a lead portal where you can, uh, you know, kind of work with his team and generate leads, get some exclusivity uh, in your marketplace and start generating hundreds of leads if that's what you choose to do. So I guess to sum it up, Preston, you're kind of like that tech guy that I've yeah. known, yeah, you know, but in my local real estate market in Myrtle Beach, you're a licensed real estate agent. So I never can figure out what the hell you are. Are you a licensed real estate agent selling real estate? Are you a tech guy or whatnot? But it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Preston, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're my friend. Uh, welcome to the Level Up Podcast. Yeah, man. Thanks. We should have uh, probably done this in person since we're not far away, but kind of hard to do. <laughs> Well, you know, between me being in Conway and all these other places yeah, for sure. on Zoom all over the world, then, uh, you know, I knew that this would be the case, but maybe we'll do a follow up that way. Um, before we get started, you know, uh, Preston, I just wanted to share with the audience, you know, a lot of people know that I've been, um, you know, focusing on websites for, for years. I probably have 10, 12 websites in the various markets, and I've really focused on um, SEO and organically growing those. Of course, I do paid search also. But I spent so many years focusing on organic. And for all of you that are listening right now, I just want you to know that Preston is one of the guys back in as early as the mid or 2005, 2006. Preston, you you got on my radar because as I was optimizing web, my websites, you were always at the top, right? And and I'm fighting to be at the top, not fighting you. I just like, I want to be like you, Right. And, um, you know, and so I followed a lot of your websites and try to figure out, like, what were you doing? How could I do better? And between yourself and myself, and there's another guy, uh, a group in town that had done very good with websites. It was always at least two of us in the top three, you know, when it comes to organic search. And so, you know, that's been years that I've been following you. And um, and so I just wanted people to know that because I kind of looked up to you in that space. I I. A lot of people think I know a lot about websites, but the reality is, is I've learned a lot from people like you. So let's just dive right into it. I want to talk first, before we get into leads, I want to talk about this ISA thing. So can you can you just set up the tone and tell me, what did you create with your partners, Digital Maverick? What's, what's the purpose of that? And what are you learning um, that's really, that that you can share with us to help us with our own databases? Yeah, I mean, the first off, we actually, John and I, you know, I've been coaching with John, friends with John for about six years now. And about two years ago, I went to him and said, hey, a lot of people come to me all the time looking for ways to generate more leads. And a lot of times they're, they just struggle with it. So originally it was Chet Black Digital. Um, we started in the, we only had one offering when we started it. It was online lead gen. So we'd, I, we'd build out Google AdWords accounts. And the whole idea for me was like, I want to build it out into other companies' accounts so they have ownership of the account. If they decide not to use this, they still have ownership. They still have all the campaigns and all that. So we did that at first. And that was the only offering. We had about 40 teams within a couple months signed up. And so we were managing AdWords for about 12 months. 
And another problem arose and we were like, okay, we're generating all these leads. They don't have systems and processes in place. Or I found myself talking people out of signing up for Chap Like Digital because I'm like, if you don't have systems and processes in place, you're going to quit after three months or four months. You know, it's, you know, for when you sign up, it's, it's three month commitment and goes month to month. And so I, we, we knew we had a problem that we had to overcome. And that's when we actually launched the DCM program. And that's the, what you're talking about is the database conversion manager program where we train an ISA, put them in your account, in your database, and they message, they text, they do all the things that you try to train agents to do and they don't necessarily do. Um, so that that came because we saw a problem that when we build out the AdWords accounts and generate a lot of leads, a lot of people weren't doing the things they needed to do. So that, that's great. Uh, that's a great, uh, great, great way to kind of, uh, you know, kind of lay out the, the the framework of what you're doing. You're 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 really talking about a problem that speaks like so loud to me because, you know, one of the things one time I discovered, uh, this I don't know if it's four or five years ago is that the agent always thinks that the way, the fastest path to increased business is more leads. And the reality is, it's like you keep piling more leads on top of more leads that, and and then you notice the business doesn't grow. Can you, what, why? What, what, what is your, like, I think you and I agree on that. Yeah. But I, 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 but it's, but an agent doesn't like to hear that. So what, what is really going on? Why doesn't more leads always lead to more business? Sometimes it does, but why isn't that always the rule? Yeah, because, you know, it's a compounding effect. Like if you take, if I give you 30 leads a week or 40 leads a week, you do good with the leads that are coming in for maybe week one, week two, the leads that came in three or four weeks ago, you're not doing anything with them. So what ends up happening, it just compounds and compounds and it just creates less follow up. A lot of times people get more confused on who to target, what to target, and all those things. So when you have a, more and more leads coming in, and what I tell people, like, well, what's a good number? And a lot of times they're surprised. I'm like, really, an agent doesn't need more than 15 to 20 leads a month. Yes. So really effectively, if you're giving them the leads and it's their responsibility to continue to follow up and follow up, because, yeah, 15 to 20 is not a lot the first month, but you go into month two, month three, month four, month five. And then you look at the average, I mean, there's going to be some that are a lot sooner, but the average pay-per-click click lead is about a 13-month 13, 13 timeline from actual registering to an appointment set to showing, like appointment set showing to closing is about 13 or 14 months. Um, and I tell people, I'm like, what, you know, the re when you look at that and you look at like a, people are always like Zillow leads, you know, they're buying soon, they're buying soon. But it's either you pay more more for the lead and they're buying sooner, you pay less for the lead and you build systems processes, you have labor that helps you follow up and then eventually close it. Um, so really, you know, really you're going to, if you continue to add on top, go back, I'm kind of going down a rabbit hole, but the leads, if you if you give it an agent too much, a lot of times they get confused on on what they should be doing. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's kind of like I remember a coach telling me when it comes to prospecting for listing leads, it's like, you know, you have to you have to define what is a lead. Like, you, what is your definition of a lead? And 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 depending on how busy one becomes, their definition of a lead has to change, right? And so, you know, a lot of times what ends up happening is the good leads get lost in all of the leads. Like, it gets lost, and like you get hundreds and hundreds of leads. I mean, how do you even know which ones are the ones you need to be spending more time with today? We need to spend time with all of our leads, but sometimes some of them can be like talk to tomorrow and some of them need to be talked to today. And we don't seem to have the mechanism to to identify how do we segment that? How do we show up? I think that's kind of why the ISAs are are coming about. Would you agree with that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the organization of the database is one of the clear deficiencies that we see in so many databases like simple systems work right complexity in a business causes issues like if you want to if you want a business to slow down and not grow create a complex what are agents going to follow simple or complex they're going to follow simple so what a lot what we see a lot of times in databases we'll see we'll jump in there 
and they'll have, you know, if you're looking at stages, right? Stages would be like, you know, a hot buyer, a cold buyer, whatever it is, whatever, whatever terminology you use. Well, some companies will have 40 or 50 stages set up. And it's like it just random stuff. So, you know, creating the one thing that we see in a lot of databases is like there's so much complexity when really they just need to focus on simplicity and their agents can follow it. Yeah. You know, I think you were talking about smart lists. Can you tell me what smart lists are? Because I, I think of that, you know, the conversation that we had. What's a smart list and what's the importance of having smart list? Yeah. So like a smart list and you because know, I've been a follow boss user for about eight years now, I think, but uh, they're, they're lists inside of, inside of follow boss and they're based on filters. Like you, you create a filter and that becomes a list. And the whole idea of a smart list is it gives you something to do every day. Like that smart list is populated, say it's populated to 20 in that smart list. The idea is to take that smart list to zero, right? Mm-hmm. So once it gets to zero, your day's done. And I tell people like whenever we're, we're talking in follow boss, it's, you go left to right, you go left to right, and your, you know, so left is inbox, then your tasks and your calendar, and then you go through your smart list, you clear out everything to zero, you're done for the day. Um, mm-hmm. But your smart lists are going to be the things like, one could be, so the idea is you want to do things where the agents don't have to think, right? So this smart list is there, you build it out in their account, it's there. And say maybe one of them's like website activity. And say it's, you know, you look at an existing database and maybe you have a trigger that they haven't been back to the website in 14 days and then they come back and then they haven't had a conversation in 30 days. So then that gives you, that populates the smart list and you say, oh, well, this person hasn't been active in a while, but they've come back. So you know, me just reach out to them. And the idea of what I tell people is like, you don't want to call them and say, hey, I saw you were back on the website. Yeah. No, just, you know, just reach out and just have a conversation. Hey, I was thinking about you today. I know we had a conversation two months ago, you know, just or even if you didn't have a conversation. And that's what a lot of people will do. Like you talk about the new leads. We always want to jump on what's brand new. Mm. But really what I tell people, like 30 days, like I love older because at 30 days, they're 30 days closer to buying. At 60 days, they're 60 days closer to buying. At 90 days, they're 90 days closer. So as agents, a lot of times we're looking at it backwards, especially when you're looking at like online leads, like pay-per-click leads or organic leads or direct leads, whatever they are, the older that lead is, the more likely they are going to buy. And so we're going to focus on this 30-day window when most likely they could be 12 months away. Instead of focusing on when it's like three months or six months old, um, that's why, you know, we with the automations and triggers and things like that to get an agent to do something is such is so critical when you're building out a database for for a team. Yeah. You know, I I, I don't think I told you this, but um, we did an audit and I can't remember how many it might have been 5000 of our leads. These are like old leads just just piled up in a database. Right. And we did an audit. And when when we did an audit, here's what we found. We found I and I can't re, I can't quote the conversion ratio because I cannot recall. But the first tw- let's just say that in twelve the first twelve months, let's just say that the conversion ratio was around seven percent, meaning the leads converted. Maybe they bought through us or didn't buy through us, but it's about seven percent. And then in year two, so months, let's just say 13 through 24, the conversion rate dropped. And I, and again, I'm going to kind of guess on this one. Maybe it was 3%. Yeah. And then in year three, month 25 through 36, that, that month, that month, the conversion rate was just the same as month zero through 12. It was actually kind of interesting. We saw that. Month 11 through 24, there was a slight dip. And then in the first year and the third year, that's where it was interesting. And it kind of goes to your point that those old leads are returned. I I tell my agents this. I said, look, if you get a lead and it, you, you call them really quick and you set an appointment and you make a sale, that's like going in the convenience store and hitting the lottery. Yes. Because that is not a new lead. That is like... That's in somebody's old lead. Yes. They you just happened to get it that day. Like you didn't come that, that was not a new lead. That was an old, you're calling it a new lead because it's new to you, but it's an old lead actually. Yeah. 
Yeah, somebody did a bad job on follow-up and you just got lucky they did a bad job. That's right. Hey, how many attempts um, do you think it's making? Like, what are you learning about? Like, how many times do we need to call to get people on the phone? What are, um, do you, you have any kind of information on um, or data on, you know, the percent of people, the percent, the chances of us doing a deal with somebody if we get them within a certain period of time? Um, you said something that I, I, I never heard anybody say this when we were we, we were riding together. And that was, um, oh, shoot, now I'm I'm starting to. It's going. It's it's leaving my mind. Oh, if you call them within the first five minutes, they're still on the computer. If you call them in fifteen minutes, you're interrupting them from for, yeah. for doing something else. I, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. By the way, um, so I'd like you to touch on that. But also, how many attempts is it taking? Um, and what duration of time do we need to be reaching these people? Can you get share some information on that? Yeah, I mean, one thing you know, with DCM program, we will launch with uh, Digital Maverick. The idea is we want to contact them within five minutes. Like I shared, the average, usually the average amount of time somebody spends on a website is three to five minutes. So if you contact them within five, there's a good chance they're still on the website. It's a good time to have a conversation. You you have kids. I have kids. Like 15 minutes later, I could have a kid throwing paint against the wall. And all of a sudden, it's just you're going to catch me in a bad time. But yeah. if you catch them when they're still searching, there's going to be a better conversation there. Um, and as far as like attempts, I tell people the same thing, like in a good market, we're going to get good phone numbers, good email addresses, good names. In a bad market or not so great market, we're going to get bad emails, bad phone numbers, and bad names. Mm -hmm. Because three years ago, two years ago, they all know they needed to talk to somebody. The first agent, they they wanted to you know, put an offer on a property. Um, but as far as contacts, I mean, the same thing there. Like in a market now, we're seeing 25 contacts before we actually have a conversation. Um, and contacts would be, you know, that could be an email, that could be a text message, that could be a phone call. Um, we are seeing, and I know a lot of this because we're talking about it this week in Nashville, about 12% of the people answer the phone. Got it. 12% of the phone, yeah. About 50 to 60% of them will respond to a text message. Mm -hmm. um, and then email is, is I've always been a huge fan of email. I've sent email newsletters, I think, for 16 years weekly now. So uh, email is still something now to utilize often. And I think it's underserved. I think a lot of people just don't do enough with the email when it's such a, such a valuable piece. Like we still, with the e-alerts we send out, the auto e-alerts that are automatically created on easy home search, we get about a 55 to 60% open rate. Yeah. And then about an 8% click through rate. So, you know, open rate, they could just be popping it up and looking at, but click through rate means they're coming back to the website. So, you know, those are things that are important. I hear a lot of people say like, oh, everybody's sending the alerts. Well, if you continue to send them, you have the chance of them actually reaching out to you when they, they see something they want. But we've seen that number. Travis and I talked about it. It's about 25, 27 contact attempts before. I mean, that, if we go back to the beginning of this conversation, like if that's, I, thank you for sharing that. That's actually more than other people are saying. But you have data to back up your comments, right? Guy, I know you have data. You and Travis have data to back up what you're saying because you're 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 dealing with thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of leads in a in a year. And so um what duration of time? Like that's a lot of attempts, attempted contact, attempt to make. And I understand it could be calls, texts, and emails. So a lot of attempts. In what duration of time? Does that all need to be done in like uh, 12 hours, 48 hours, 24 hours? Or like, no, I mean, that is that awesome. stretched over time. What What is that? Yeah, that's stretched over time. So okay. you're going to have 10% of them, 15% of them you might get in touch with within three contacts. But then we're also continuing to communicate well beyond what most people quit at. Like most yeah. people quit at a month, you know, 15 days, 30 days. But like if you look at you know, whatever you want to call it, but we use 10 days of pain, 10 days of gain, whatever you want to go. There's yeah. so many different variations of it. You know, just based on that, by day 11, they've already been reached out to 30 times. You know, day say 30 times. Already 30 times, got it. Yeah, name, I mean, uh, email, phone, text. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, you know, some people video text, but um, try to get agents to do that. That's a different story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I always say it's like I do, I coach agents about videos and, they're like, well, I don't like what I look on on camera. I says, well, I just want you to know you look the same on camera as you do in person. Correct. So, yeah. How, well, are, you, how are you faking it in person? 
I don't like the way I sound. Well, I hate to tell you, but that's what you said. <laughs> That's what you sound like. And the only way to get used to it is listen to yourself and eventually you'll be like, oh, I don't sound too bad. Yeah. So it's, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, we've seen that number go up, you know, and, and part of what we do, like I do on the AdWords side is there's a um, 7-11-4. So 7-11-4 is something that, that it's the book called Oversubscribed, but, um, and I think I talked to you about this yeah. briefly. But it's seven out, you know, people need seven hours of content from you before they, you could actually move into their network of potentially selling them something. Seven hours, 11 instances, and four locations. So four locations could be YouTube, email. When you think about it, seven hours of content, it doesn't have to be on the phone. It could be, they're reading your emails. They could be watching your videos on YouTube. They could be whatever they are. Like we have a team in Reside that he has a massive YouTube channel, like ridiculous. Like he gets, hundreds of thousands of watch hours a month from this. So when he gets these leads coming in, they always already feel like they have a relationship with him because they've seen so much of his content, listened to so much of his content online. So they're like the leads to, that you want to get. Like, hey, you you don't know us, but we know you. We want to look at this house tomorrow. And yeah. he's getting the influx of those leads because he's building a relationship with them without even meeting them. Yeah. Um, That's so, cool. you that's that's a lot of the ways like when we're building out AdWords campaigns, those are some of the things we focus on is like because most people just like the old leads, right? Like most people will run text ads that are at top of the page, bottom of the page, and 90% of the people will not ever register on the text ad. So what do you do after the fact to target those leads to get them to come back? And those are the ones that are less expensive to target because they've already been back onto your website. So mm. um what we talk about in like old leads and new leads, you kind of do that same same path in AdWords as well. Yeah. So I want to switch gears from the ISA side to, you know, kind of it's a good segue to get into, say, online leads. You know, um, man, le these online leads, though, though real estate agents will often say they're terrible. Yeah. They... Agents must be doing a lot of business off of online leads because we sure are spending a lot of money on it. Okay. And, and, and the reality is, is like for every agent that says, I'm going to stop, there's three more that are like, I'm going to start. And there's plenty of agents converting extremely well with online leads. Hmm. So you've got Easy Home Search. It's kind of like a national portal. Your, your portal, your goal. I, I, I kind of see on your Facebook page, you guys are adding states and MLSs all the time, which is, you know, it's pretty exciting to see that growth. Um, what was your kind of inspiration of why you got into more of a national kind of lead generating portal? What, how, how, how'd that evolve? I mean, I've always seen you on a local yeah. side, but well, now I, national, yeah. what's, where'd that come from? <laughs> it was just kind of, um, I tell people, I'm like, you ever seen the movie, The Money Pit? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the easy home search was my money pit. Um, it was, you know, originally, so we, I developed that out when we started revolution in Myrtle beach and it was a way to generate leads to hand off to a mortgage company. Um, so did that. I mean, we, revolution branch was number one in the country in 2021 locally. And I realized I wasn't a big fan of the mortgage industry. So I continued adding markets, continue adding markets. And, you know, we continued to grow the traffic. I think it, before we moved over to the brand new site, we were averaging about 300,000 organic visits a month. Um, and so, it, you know, it was kind of, I was like, I really, I've always enjoyed this side of the business. I always enjoyed the real estate lead gen side, developing content, SEO and that side of it. So it, um, it was, no, it wasn't a plan at first and then it kind of evolved to a plan and it was like, okay, well, if I'm going to continue doing this, I need to start generating revenue from it because it's the money pit right now. Like everything I was doing, I was putting into it. And um, and that's how it evolved. And then I looked at it from the standpoint of, you know, we started Chep Like Digital. I saw that, you know, a lot of places, a lot of people get taken advantage of a lot of times when it comes to leads. There's so many. And you look at the history of lead portals and how they've changed and we'll never do this. They did it. We'd never do this. They did it. Um, yeah. For me, it's, all, you know, we're always going to be open and honest. We always say, you know, one lead to one person. You're on the site. You're going to, if you get one lead, that's never going to be handed off to somebody else. And we wanted to create, looking at it, how we came up with the county exclusivity was because I was like, okay, lead portals struggle because a lot of times they're selling zip codes, they're selling cities. And you think about the sales force, if you're trying to sell zip codes in cities across the country, 
Well, there's roughly about 3,600 counties across the country. Probably about 2,000 of those are sellable. So I'm like, okay, we got a much smaller sales force just selling exclusivity in counties and then doing that. And then what we're doing may be different is we're focused on what happens after we hand the lead off. Like we're really continuing the push. And as we develop is like, how can we develop where we help that team or that company or that agent convert that lead at a higher level? Um, So really that's kind of what we're focused on is like, what can we do to help the agent after the lead gets delivered? Yeah. You know, one of the things um, you've elected, and I don't know if you ever will, I know that's, I don't think it's in the vision, but you've elected to um, kind of like, you know, give people the opportunity for exclusivity for a fee and and stay away from the referral fees. Yeah. Um, and I think the reason why I bring that up right now is you just said you're you're going a little bit further trying to help your agent stay on top of their leads and convert. But you're doing it because you feel like that's where agents need help. Whereas other portals, what they're doing, they're doing it because they need to be they need to over police you in order to be able to get their referral fee. Yeah. So they will just keep over policing and over policing and making sure you do this and do that and sign into their portal and put in these notes. I'm not saying all that's bad. I, I'm just saying that there's a difference. So when people are thinking like, you know, gosh, I feel like these people are a little bit too much in my business. Well, you got to understand if they're not, they probably don't get their referral fee. Right. So doing it with the intentions, it's kind of a self-serving, uh, you know, uh, intention there. But I like how you, you being a real estate guy, not a technology guy also, but I mean, you're really a real estate guy. Yeah. You're thinking about more of like, what does the agent really need versus what do we need the agent to do for us to make money? I just think that that's, uh, that's worth noting because I think you actually care about the agent. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all out of care, right? Like I care, you know, the real estate business in a lot of ways saved my life in in a lot of different ways. And, um, for me, that's really the reason why, like I want to help teams and name another business where you capture 3% of sales revenue that you're actually profitable and then give away 40% of that 3% and then you got to pay everybody else. So yeah. It's, you know, everything that's happening in this industry and everything we see in the news, all the falsies and everything we we see all the time. You know, it's it's a way for me to like, how can I help teams, help teams with the things many of them struggle with? And and a lot of times it is like the agent follow up and I get it. Agents get busy. Um, but like, what can we do to help the teams convert? And it'll we'll never do a referral fee, but it'll never be a referral fee for that reason, because I know how hard it is to be profitable as a general brokerage and still run a good business and hire people. And, you know, the, all the things out there in the commission world and everything else is there's just so much false information out there. Um, And I know how hard it is to be profitable. So that's really the reason why I want to do that. It's, it's not going to be an additional cost. It's just something we're going to focus on. Like what can we do to help people convert at a higher level? And what kind of information can we pass on to the team where they can close more deals? Yeah. You know, you talk about false information. We're really right in the thick of it right now. <laughs> this, uh, you know, and this recording's not live, but for those of you, it'll come out pretty soon. And we're we're like a couple of days away from the NAR settlement um, being out there. And, you know, it's some interest. There's two interesting things that I see going on right now. Number one, we got the FCC who put a new rule that lead companies, and I'm paraphrasing here. Um, that lead companies cannot hand out the lead to more than one real estate or one person or company, which is kind of like more than one person. Um, and then we've got the NAR settlement that says um, the Cobroke Commission will no longer be allowed to be uh, displayed in, as a field inside of the MLS. That's really stirring people up. And then we've got the other thing that I think people are talking about less, and that is they've got to get that buyer agency agreement signed before they show their first property. That is a game changer. Now, look, for every like challenge, there's a there's a there's a counter benefit, right? And for those that will really think positive and 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 be solution oriented, the answer to the opportunity is going to be crystal clear probably sooner than you think. But if we're focusing on 
the negativity and all the fake you know comments that are all over social media, it'll be months and months, if not years, before you can actually recover from this drunkenness of conversation. Yeah. But what are your thoughts on, you know, again, it's a little early, but yeah. see, see, I think that's a good thing for to only give the lead to one person. And you already said that's what you're doing already. So you don't have much issue on that. Um, but what are your thoughts on that? I, I think it's a good thing. What about you? I mean, I think so, too. I mean, it's, we, you know, we've been lied to. We've been told it's only going to one person. All of a sudden, yeah, you, one person. Next thing you know, you have your buddy that's in another real estate company calling the same lead. Um, so that's a good thing. I mean, it's all these companies that were coming out. Hey, I could take the lead and you could sell it to Joe Blow and get all this money and you get your money back, everything else. And then all of a sudden you create more problems because that leads registering on your website. 10 different other people are calling it based on them registering on your site and you're giving it to other people. Yeah. Um, and that's that'll always be that, you know, we're going to deliver it to one person, one team, and that's the way it'll be. Now, the yeah, th there was so much in that NAR <laughs> that that was good that yeah. we, people overlooked all the good stuff, like, you know, $2 billion, you don't have to worry about, you know, you're protected and everything else. There was so much good in that. We jump on... And it's all like and jump on it. It's just MLS fees being displayed. Like speak to a great, obviously you're an amazing listing agent and you've listed thousands of properties. Greg, you're still going to ask for six percent so a buyer's agent can get paid, right? Like have that conversation. And that's the thing. Yeah. Like so they're going to require what we've been coaching agents to do: get their buyer's agency signed before you put them in your car and show property. And we've had in South Carolina buyer's agency agreements for how many years now? Years. I mean, I, Florida, I didn't them. realize Florida didn't require them, though. Well, yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I thought I found, I, I found that out this morning. So, um, you know, that's the big thing. And that's what people are worried about. But, it, you know, it's sad in our industry, too, like how many people are using this as a way to recruit to their downline or do whatever they're doing. You know, like 600,000 people are walking out the door. No, they're not. It's, we should. And I mean, if if, if 600,000 agents walk out the door, the, people will blame it on this situation. But the reality is, is this, this won't be the reason. No. It, you know, it, it's, I remember Brendan Payne saying, and I kind of started adopting what he said. It's like, you know, when the market the economy, the market dropping or the economy going down, is not the cause of our businesses going down. It's our lack of response to a market or economy going down. It's the lack of response to change yeah. that determines our future. It's not change. Change doesn't determine. It's how we react or how we respond to it is going to determine it. So nothing happened in the last couple of days that's going to change our game. What's going to what what we do over the next 30, 60, 90 days is going to determine if the game's changed. And I think that's where it all boils down to. So I think you and I have, I've, I've kind of seen some of your social media and you probably see mine. I think we're both being, we're wanting to be maybe solution oriented. Like when we post on it, we're, we're trying to be the solution versus be part of the problem. We'll let all the other people be part of the problem and live in that world. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I think agents tend to bury themselves. Like we have to deal with it in the news, like all the headlines on the news, the clickbait out there is obnoxious, right? Yeah. And then we're putting it out there and we put it out there like we're only worried about the 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 commission not being shared on the MLS. So what are we showing the public? Oh, we're paying attention to the MLS to see which houses we want to show based on the yeah. commission being displayed. Yeah. Which is we can't exactly what we're showing. Yeah. You know, so so to me it's just it the response has been it's been pretty sad, the amount of you know, what people have used, whether to grow their business or however they're tackling it. But man, I think it's good. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think any, there's negativity in it. There's negativity. The ones that can't, can't have that conversation about finance with or with the consumers are the ones that are going to struggle. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, I, I've been talking to my agents within our offices and, and we've been, I had a 730 call this morning and and I'm, I'll have multiple calls tomorrow in, in group settings. And this is what we're brainstorming. We're just brainstorming like, hey, what adjustments can we make that puts in a position, puts us in, it puts us and our, and the consumer in a better position to win? 
Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to let that be the basis of our conversation. What adjustments can we make that'll put ourselves and the consumer in a much better position to win based on all this conversation? And it will keep our, 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 our focus on that dialogue. We may not have the answer today, but if we keep having that conversation, it's not long before we got a whole list of answers that all we have to do is execute on. So, hey, uh, there'll be more on that subject. But before yeah. we before we kind of, you know, get going, a couple things. Number one, I want to just say, you know, what for those people that have accumulated larger databases, because they've been buying leads for a long time, and inside of those databases, they they they're experiencing leads that are not engaging almost seem a little bit dormant or the worst word is dead. Yeah. What can somebody do to kind of maybe was you can you can you give anybody any tips on maybe if people that are in that situation, what what can they do to maybe stimulate a little bit of engagement real quick? Yeah, for sure. I mean the one thing a lot of you don't realize is a lot of platforms will sunset e alerts. So they will after six months they the alert shut off. After a year the alert shut off. So it's as simple as something going through the database and seeing the ones that don't have the alerts on and just turn them back on. Like majority of them will sunset after six months. So if they're not coming back and following it or anything, so that's a good way to turn it back on. But then also look at automations. And like, if you're having people that are coming back to the site, triggering based on those activities, like look at the activity of the database and then triggering automations. I say automations. I don't mean automations to send a message out. I say automations to create a task so the agent actually sends yeah. an email or sends a text or makes a phone call. You know, those are the big things. And, and then really look at segmentation of the audience. And, you know, you could, be, whether you built, we use, you know, we've utilized ponds in a way that we use them for training, right? But you bring on 10 new agents or eight new agents or whatever, there's no better place to start them calling because we could role play all day long. But there might be some, unless you're really good at it and you would be one that's good at it, but some people aren't going to role play with you like the person on the other line. You know, yeah. so putting them into a pond where, you know, you have a group of new agents that could call them, you know, those type of things, that's a good thing to do. But really like e-alerts, but a lot of people don't realize e-alerts with a lot of companies sunset after six months or a year. Um, that's a hey, good you know, thing. That's a, that's, a, that's a great one. That, that, that's a great point. I, I, I like that. I appreciate you sharing that. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I really knew. I think I've heard of things like that, <laughs> but I, I thought it was more about like deliverability and that's maybe that's why they do it. Yeah, but, sure. you know, I just haven't thought because it'd be easy to go ahead and just say all 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 leads that are six month or older and just that have a safe search. And then we'll know exactly how many don't. Right. That That's 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 great. And then also looking at the one thing, too, that we've seen in the DCM program and a lot of plat, a lot of databases is some teams think automations are always working. And uh, we we looked at a team that was a massive database and they had over a million leads in our database. And they assumed that the automations were working the action. So they had it where if there wasn't a contact in 30 days, move it back to the ISA team. So we they had it set up in teams in different markets. We looked at one was 700, should have been moved. The next market was like 1,200. Mm -hmm. So it was about 11,000 leads that were beyond the point of being moved to the correct stage or correct ISA team. So you need to audit what you have. And I will say, you know, inspect what you expect, right? Like inspect what you expect. It's, you can't have automations. You can't have zaps doing it all for you because a lot of times those things break. Right. And I'll, so I'm, so I'm, I'm in, I it, I mean, don't forget it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't forget it. And, you know, I'm, I love tech and everything else, but I also understand that tech breaks and, and things happen. So you definitely need to always inspect it and have somebody go in and look at that to make sure it's working properly. Yeah. So a monthly audit, something like that would be, yeah. it would be just smart, especially if you're going to invest in buying leads, right? And make this investment because, you know, it, it when I invest, say I invest in uh, buying leads from you. Well then, okay. Uh, you 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 have some duties to deliver on whatever promises you make, right? But at the same token, you do not have the duty of uh, dictating what my ROI is going to be. That's going to be on me, right? And so I need to have my systems internally kind of set up to be able to make sure I get an ROI. You're going to make sure that I get a lead flow based on some sort of again agreement or expectations that we've agreed on. 
Um, and that's where inspecting comes in. That's protecting and making sure you're going to get an ROI. So you talked about Digital Ma Maverick, but you called it DCM. I tell you, every time you tell me, I think I miss mess it up. No, it digi yeah, Digital Maverick is the company. So yes, DCM but is Database Conversion Manager. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. got it. So yeah. if somebody wants information on that, uh, you know, what where can you point them? Yeah, it's cheplikedigital.com or digitalmaverick.com. They all go to the same place. And we have four, we have four or five offerings now. We still do AdWords. We have a less expensive AdWords program. We also were launching a recruiting similar to DCM, but it's on the recruiting side. So text and email and recruiting agents instead of consumers. Got it. And what about the easy home search, you know, which is more of a lead portal, is I, I would say. It's more than that, but it's it's the best way I can describe it. And yeah, I mean, really, right now we're launching partner with easy.com. So easy.com, but uh, just find me on Facebook is the best way. Partner with easy.com is not out yet. They can they could send it through easyhomesearch.com, but you know, it's consumer facing. Like what what we don't want to do is have joining easyhomesearch.com with consumers to be able to see that. But yeah. you could message on there as well. But Facebook, Instagram, um, find me on there is the best way to reach me. Well, great. Well, uh, Preston, I'm going to see you in a couple of days. Me yeah. and Kevin are going to show up in Nashville on uh, Thursday evening and hang out with you guys and kind of see what you guys got going on, see what John's got. And I, it's always exciting to be around uh, yeah. Chet Black and he always brings in good speakers. So I'm excited to be there. Um, and um, other than that, thank you so much for yeah, uh, yes on Level Up Podcast. I'm sure we'll do some follow up. And yeah, for, for sure. you that are that are listening, please check out what Preston's going, got going on. Follow him. Um, there's some really good, if you just listen to podcasts and things that he's on, you're always going to learn something and, you know, please, uh, let us know, um, you know, through, um, you know, comments and feedback, you know, let us know how we're doing. Give us a, you know, a, a review. You can give me a bad review and I'm okay with it. I just want to learn from it. Just give me a review. And uh, of course, uh, uh, hit the subscribe button and share this as much as you can. Preston, I really appreciate it, bud. And, uh, I'm sure I'll see you really soon. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. All right. You too, man.